So welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you the Geiger counter that I built with the Russian SI-8B pancake probe. Uh, it's based on a pretty standard design using a microcontroller to generate a PWM. For the high voltage generation I don't use a transformer because I find that those are often not handy, you just don't have one around, but this just uses an inductor and a n-channel MOSFET, so those are both components that you can easily scrape off a TV or anything that you disassemble. And I'm going to go over the design. Um, the high voltage generation is probably the most interesting part. Uh, the device has a plateau voltage of about 400 volts. Um, I'm going to explain how I did that and I'm going to show you the probe itself and the probe casing that I built for it. And we're going to compare the probe against the probe of a Gamma Scout and see how it does. So let me first go over the design a little bit. The input voltage of about 8 volts DC comes in here and goes through a 7805 to create the 5 volts for the microcontroller. I've been using a 8090S4433. That's a device that you wouldn't use today. You'd probably use an 80 mega 8 or something like that in here. But I just had that left over, so I just used it up. And a 8 megahertz crystal here. This was a reference uh, voltage for the ADC, but I ended up not using that. Over here you can see the high voltage generation, so the AVR produces a PWM. I like to use uh, the AVR for creating the PWM here because it allows you to select the duty cycle and the frequency appropriately without having to know these parameters beforehand. So this uh, basically triggers the gate of the MOSFET, which then charges and discharges the inductor, so we get high voltage spikes here. Those spikes are rectified and run through this 10 nanofarad capacitor. And then over here you see the Geiger tube circuitry, it's a 100 picofarad capacitor. And here are some Zener diodes, 2 times 200 volts, which actually um, feed back to a transistor back here, which disables the PWM so that we have uh, voltage feedback, which uh, zeroes in at about 400 volts. The LM555 over here is a very decadent variant that is just used for clicking the speaker. And with this uh, trim pot here, you can actually select the duration of the uh, uh, clicking pulses. I've used that so that the microcontroller is uh, free in its ISR routine. Um, and it just needs to output a digital pulse that can be very short. And this is basically a monoflop that then triggers the actual speaker. This here is a connector that transports power, 5 volts, and the RS232 TTL to a separate circuit board that I regularly use to convert it to plus minus 12 volts for a connection with a PC. Um, the AVR outputs the amount of counts and the counts per time unit on that RS232 line. And this is the enclosure that I put the SI-8B probe into. I've used a fan guard here so that you can't accidentally touch the probe itself. Here is a BNC connector for the high voltage input and count output. And this is just a handle to make it holding it easier. So that's all that is to that. So now I've connected it to a 8 volt source and not yet connected the probe itself just to show you that it outputs about 400 volts. Anything between 360 and 440 volts is okay for this probe. Measures about 385 volts. So now I'll hook up the probe itself and use some thorium welding electrodes to show you that it actually works. So here you can see the Gamma Scout, which lays on top of the welding electrodes. You can see about 1.4 uh, microsieverts per hour. Now let's just turn on the beeper. 
and let's show the counts per second. So you can see it's roughly three to four counts per second, sometimes a bit lower, sometimes a bit higher. And here's now the same setup with the SI-8B. One reason that I used the NA555 for making the speaker click is because that allows me to control or to shut off the clicking in software using the AVR, which is what I did currently. I'm now going to place the pancake probe on top of the same electrodes. We'll see how much it reads and I'm going to turn on the click on software. So I've turned the clicker off again and I've measured about 38 counts per second here. So roughly 10 times the sensitivity of the Geiger counter probe that is within the Gamma Scout. So here's the zero rate or the background radiation rate. We have about 0.515 counts per second. So this is about 30, 31 counts per minute. On the Gamma Scout, on the Pancake probe, we have about 125 counts per minute. So this is roughly four times the count rate that the Gamma Scout has. So this is a more radioactive source that I have. It's autonite, which is a um, kind of rock. The Gamma Scout gives about 18 to 20 counts per second here. So it also issues a radiation alert because this is rather radioactive. It contains uranium. It uh, is about 10 microsieverts per hour. So we've seen about 20 counts per second with this source here. And now let's see what the pancake probe measures. I'll first leave the clicker on, but then immediately I'm going to turn it off because it's going to go crazy. So here we can see about 183 counts per second. So again, about 10 times as sensitive as the Gamma Scout. And just to confirm that it really outputs data on the serial line, you can here actually see the actual output. Uh, it records the cumulative number of counts that it has received, the number of counts in the last second, and the time, all in hexadecimal notation because that's the easiest. And from there you can basically do all the calculations. If I put it on the thorium source again, You can see that it goes over um, thir oh, about 30 hex counts a second. So this is an overview over the interesting parts of the schematic. You can see to the left here is the PWM input. So this is what the microcontroller generates. It goes through this 330 ohm resistor into the gate of this N-channel MOSFET, which basically shorts the inductor 15 millihenries to ground. This is connected to the plus 12 volts or plus 8 volts in my case, doesn't really matter. Basically, this is just the direct input voltage um, before the 7805. Here's a Schottky diode um, to relieve the internal body diode of the SK2480. I don't know if that's really necessary or dead weight, but it doesn't do any harm anyways. And then here is another uh, fast Schottky diode, which basically rectifies the voltage here. It goes through this 10 nanofarad capacitors to stabilize it. And here, this is all the circuitry that is needed for the Geiger tube, 10 meg in series with 100K. And here is the 100 picofarads to generate the actual signal. Here's the tube uh, viewed from the backside. Here's the notch and the pin description just for clarification again. 
And this here is the feedback line, the whole stabilization. We have two Zener diodes in series, which are both rated at 200 volts. So this means when the voltage at this point becomes more than 400 volts, those two will start to conduct and a current is going to flow into the base of this transistor here, which will effectively shut off the MOSFET here because it will pull down the gate directly and the PWM will have no effect. So this stabilizes that voltage at this point to about 400 volts. Down here is not really anything interesting. Through this 100 picofarad capacitor, there are negative pulses generated and those are fed into a PNP transistor, just some standard resistor BC558. And um, you can here on the collector see a pull down of 10 kilo ohms and this goes out to the IRQ line of the AVR. This here is the LM555 and how I use it. Basically on this trigger line, there are short negative pulses that are generated in the ISR routine of the AVR. And that is just standard um, monoflop uh, circuitry here, which generates this pulses on the outline here, which triggers a standard NPN transistor. And this basically makes the speaker click. That's everything there is to it. So I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. Maybe you'll tune in the next time. Until then, bye.